Hi, welcome to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video um, and welcome if you are new. My name is Laura and I post book and writing related content here on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, please click the subscribe button. So today I'm going to be talking about some classics that I would recommend for beginners. So some people might have made reading classics one of their goals for 2023. I know I made one of my goals to um, read more classics in the new year and I'll link the video or talk about my goals for 2023 in the cards. But yeah, I have some books for people who uh, would like to get into reading classics but don't really know where to start. Um, as always, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like and comment down below what classics you would recommend or what you thought of these books if you've read any of them. And yeah, let's get into this video. So the first book I have on this list is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. And this is one of the first classics I read when I was just starting to get into classics in high school. So The Bell Jar was published in 1963 and it's by Sylvia Plath, who is a poet and writer. This is a book about um, Esther. Um, and Esther is very like talented and successful, but she is struggling with her mental health. And it's an exploration of Esther's sort of breakdown and her how she spirals and yeah it's a really great book um it's short so it's not a very long read the language is very accessible it's a bit more of a modern classic so you know the language is more similar to something that you would see today um and it's very interesting and gripping and i think it's one that if you haven't read a lot of classics then this is a great one to start with i remember really uh loving this book when i read it and it being very impactful and it is one that I'm hoping to reread in 2023 but yeah so that's the first one and the next one I have on this list is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston and this is another more modern classic I think when was this published okay uh 1937 so a bit earlier than uh The Bell Jar so I'll read the blurb for this one Zora Neale Hurston's beloved 1937 classic is an enduring southern love story sparkling with wit beauty and heartfelt wisdom it is told in the captivating voice of the fiercely independent and stunningly attractive Janie Crawford, who refuses to live in sorrow, bitterness, fear, or foolish romantic dreams. As she endured three marriages in a life marked by trials and tribulations, she evolved into an unforgettable heroine. A true literary wonder, Hurston's masterwork remains as relevant and affecting today as when it was first published, perhaps one of the most widely read and highly regarded novels in the entire literary canon. So if you haven't picked up this one yet, I would highly, highly recommend it. The writing is really beautiful. It, again, it's not a super long novel and it's not super dense, but um, it can take a bit at first to get used to the style of writing, but I think that once you're into it, it's really gripping and beautiful and one I would highly recommend. So the next one I have on this list is a Jane Austen and I picked Persuasion. Um, Pride and Prejudice is another good choice, but I feel like I'm always recommending Pride and Prejudice, so I thought I'd pick a new one. Um, and the blurb is, at 27, Anne Elliot is no longer young and has few romantic prospects. Eight years earlier, she had been persuaded by her friend, Lady Russell, to break off her engagement to Frederick Wentworth, a handsome naval captain with neither fortune nor rank. What happens when they encounter each other again is movingly told in Jane Austen's last completed novel. Set in the fashionable societies of Lyme Regis and Bath, persuasion is a brilliant satire of vanity and pretension, but above all, it is a story tinged with the heartache of missed opportunities. So that is Persuasion. Um, I read this one for my Regency Literature class in university. Um, and I really loved it. It's again not one of her longer ones. It's I find the writing really accessible. It's a great story, second chance romance. It's great if you really want to get into classics but don't know where to start and are interested in maybe reading Jane Austen. I think this is one of the ones I'd recommend you try first. This and Pride and Prejudice would be the ones that I would say would be a good entry into Jane Austen. And yeah, it's really great. And then I have an F. Scott Fitzgerald on this list, and that is Tender is the Night. Again, a lot of people recommend The Great Gatsby if they recommend F. Scott Fitzgerald, at least for something uh, for beginners, because I know a lot of people read The Great Gatsby in high school. But I wanted to recommend Tender is the Night instead, because I very much preferred Tender is the Night. And I've read pretty much all of F. Scott Fitzgerald novels by now. I went through a phase where I just wanted to like work my way through all of his books. I really like his writing style. And this is by far one of my favorites. And the blurb is... Set on the French Riviera in the late 1920s, Tender is the Night is a tragic romance of a young actress, Rosemary Hoyt, and the stylish American couple Dick and Nicole Diver. A brilliant young psychiatrist at the time of his marriage, Dick is both husband and doctor to Nicole, whose wealth goads him into a lifestyle not his own, and whose growing strength highlights Dick's harrowing demise. A profound study of the romantic concept of character, they are co-expensive and hauntingly evocative. Tender is the Night, Mabel Dodge Luhan remarked, raised F. Scott Fitzgerald to the heights of a modern Orpheus. So, 
Yeah, this one, I just love the style. Again, it's not a super long novel. I think it's a great one if like you're going maybe somewhere warm or just in general, but it's really beautiful. This is the first line. On the pleasant shore of the French Riviera, about halfway between Marseille and the Italian border, stands a large, proud, rose-colored hotel. Um, deferential palms cool its flush facade, and before it stretches a short, dazzling beach. So, as you can see, like, it's very, you know, accessible language, and I think it's really a great story, and a very a one you should definitely read. And then the next one I have on this list is by Andrew Steinway, and that is The Old Man of the Sea, which he won the Pulitzer for. Um, the Old Man in the Sea is one of Hemingway's most enduring works. Told in the language of great simplicity and power, it is the story of an old human fisherman, down on his luck in a supreme ordeal, a relentless, agonizing battle with a giant marlin far out in the Gulf Stream. Here, Hemingway recasts in strikingly contemporary style the classic theme of courage in the face of defeat, of personal triumph won from loss. Where in, in 1952, this hugely successful novel confirmed his power and presence in the literary world and played a large part in his winning the 1954 Nobel Prize for Literature. That is, the Old Man in the Sea, and while it is not my favorite Hemingway, even though I do really, really like it, um, this one is a great one if you're just getting into classics because it's very, very short. It's like, I don't even know, 127 pages. This one you can read in one sitting, um, and of course it is a very stunning novel and one that I think more people should read. And, you know, it's not, the text isn't dense. Um, Hemingway's style is very, like, pared back and very clear and concise so I think if you're trying to get into classics and you haven't read any Hemingway then this is a good one to pick up. And then the last one I have on this list is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Wuthering Heights has achieved an almost mythical status as a love story, yet it is also a unique masterpiece of the imagination, an unsettling transgressive novel about obsession, violence, and death. It begins as a man is forced to shelter at a strange, grim house on the Yorkshire Moors during a snowstorm. There he discovers the tempestuous events that took place there years before, the intense love between Catherine Earnshaw and the foundling Heathcliff, her betrayal of him, and how his terrible revenge continues to haunt the past. So I mentioned this one in books that I would recommend to each Sex and the City character, so I'll link that in the cards, but I recommend this one for Charlotte, but I think this is a really great classic. Honestly, the first time I read it, it was in high school and I absolutely hated it because it was not at all what I was expecting. Like, don't go into this expecting this, like, very romantic love story. Um, it's very dark. The characters are very unlikable, but it's so brilliantly written. It's such an interesting character study and a look at very morally questionable and morally great characters. Um, the landscapes and everything, just the way it's described is really stunning. And it's a classic for a reason. And I read it a second time when I was in my getting my degree. And I enjoyed it a lot more that time and I, I think I understood it a lot more so this is one I would recommend if you want to get into classics just don't expect a love story um so yeah those are the six books that I would recommend if you want to get into classics so as always if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and click the subscribe button I post um new videos every Tuesday and Friday so stay tuned for that and comment down below what you thought of any of these books if you've read them or um, what classics you would recommend and I will see you guys in the next one.